at the lack of demonstration of love in the body of Christ, the lack of friendship in the body of Christ, I can see that what's happening is we are not working on producing fruit. When you produce the fruit of, spe- of the spirit, your attitude changes. And when I hear Christian folks talk about some, I ain't got no friends. Well, you probably got a nasty attitude. Y'all don't want to look at me. I'm going to say it. I hear so many Christian folks talking about, I ain't got no friends. I ain't got no friends. All I need is King Jesus. All I need King Jesus. I don't need nobody else. Well, if you didn't need nobody else, then he would just made you by yourself and you would just be here by yourself and would nobody be here. That's right, Pastor. Y'all looking at me. Fruit bearer. You got to work on your fruit. Because the Bible says that he who has friends must do what? Must show. Now I'm looking at the, the I'm looking at the state of the body of Christ, and I'm looking at the state of the world. The body of Christ can't get along, but all the world needs is a ball of Hennessy and a blunt. Y'all don't want to hear me. Can I speak from out of my spirit this morning so that we can get delivered? I'm looking at the games and how they can get together, but yet the body of Christ can't get together. And I'm looking at two different sides. How all they have to do is get a ball of Hennessy and everything good. We straight. You've been fighting the day before. You've been cussing each other out. But the next day, say, hey, girl, I got this baller. Come, let's get towed up. Let's get lit. But then God said, I gave you Jesus. And you have this court, and you can't call up and say, hey, sister, let's pray together. Hey, brother. Let's, let's, let's worship together. Let's, let's have Bible study. And God said, something is wrong with this picture. Something is wrong with this picture. Why? Because we are not working on our fruit. You can't produce fruit by yourself. When Jesus said, you abide in me. He says, you have to abide in Jesus so that you can produce fruit because nobody can produce fruit on his own. Why? Because Jesus said, I'm divine. My father is the husbandman or the gardener. You touch somebody and say, you. You a branch. Right now, I I need you to see yourself as a branch. Jesus is divine, which is the stem. <laughs> the, Jesus is rooted in his father, rooted in the ground. The roots are deep in the soil. And he symbolizes himself as a vine. He says that my father is the cultivator. He is the gardener. He, Jesus said, my father's the one that sold me in the earth. Who yeah. good God am I? Yeah. And ye are the branches that hang off and is attached to the vine. Yeah. He says that the ones that produce fruit, guess what he do? He clean you. Yeah. Yeah. So what, listen, so what does that cleaner mean? That means he cleaned up your attitude. He cleaned up your distorted look. He cleaned up your bad vibe. I told y'all last week, God gave me a sermon talking about I'm I'm handing out good vibrations 
from the Beach Boys. Good vibes, a smile on my face, joy in my heart, calmness in my voice, gentleness in my touch. Good God about it. I am handing out good vibrations everywhere I go and it make people, other people have good vibrations because I'm handing out good vibes. If you come in the church and you ain't got no good vibe, then the person that is next to you not gonna have good vibes because now you're giving off an aura of not having good vibes and when you that's why you got to work on your fruit. Look at somebody say, we got to work on our fruit. Because a lot of folks say they ain't got no friends, but you got to ask yourself, now if God said I'm going to have friends by showing myself friendly, that means that it ain't something wrong with them, it's something wrong with me. But ain't nobody going to come and tell you, there ain't no preacher going to come and tell you it's something wrong with you. They want to keep you in these pews so as they'll say something wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. And have you shouting all over the church. But they won't say, they won't tell you that he that showed himself friendly have a lot of friends. Yeah, that's right. So you mean to tell me, you got to show something yeah. to have a friend. Yeah. Oh, y'all looking at me. You got to show something. Look at somebody and say, my pastor finna change the game. I ain't playing. I'm going to change the game in heart. This traditional stuff, I'm going to change the game. If I got to do it by myself, I'm going to change the game. God said, listen, how many people want to be a game changer? Look at your name and say, I want to be a game changer. A game changer. Whoa. Well, you thought it was over. Yeah. You thought we, you thought we, we've been out in the first half. Yeah. You go in for halftime, and then Jesus give you a pep talk. Yeah. And say, hey, wait a minute. You supposed to be the righteousness of God. Yeah. You supposed to be the love of God. You, yeah. you supposed to love people and help yeah. people. And then when you come back in come the on. third and fourth quarter. You done change the game. And sometimes God have to call somebody from the outside so he can change the church. That's why God called Paul. Because he said, I got to get somebody from the outside so I can change some folks on the inside because they don't want the Gentiles to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I got to have somebody on the outside. Ooh, shut up. So vocal. Bring them on the inside and change the game. This is why I'm not so critical about people in the world because I understand something. Why should I be critical and they dealing with folks in the church that's meaner than a junkyard dog? Y'all don't want to hear me. Meaner than a junkyard dog. You, you can't even go and get your lost baseball. Y'all looking at me. You can't even get your lost baseball. You play baseball and it go in the junkyard, the dog won't let you get the ball. Y'all don't want to hear me. The dog won't let you get the ball. You got folks that want to come in the church and they want to change, but you don't understand the process of change. And you don't understand the striving where you have to strive with somebody for them to change. You can't expect folks just to change. You got to be a friend. You got to love to the end. You got to strive with them until they get there. Look at somebody say, start in the house. Start in the house. Start in the house. How in the world you can't be a friend to the person you sitting to right now? You serve the same God. Look at the person sitting next to you. 
If they sitting too far away, look across the room. Now ask yourself this question. Why, why we can't be friends? Huh? Huh? I came to, I came to tear down and build up. I'm gonna tear you down, then I'm gonna build you back up again. And them folks in the world, they can go to a club and everybody have a good time and get lit and drink, but we can't go to the church and get lit. See, I can go to the church and I can get lit, I can get drunk in the spirit, and I can have a good old time. Why we can't be friends? Why can they on the outside be friends and we can't be friends? Something is wrong with that picture. I, I need some help with this thing. Somebody got to show me why we can't be friends. Come on, guys. Who are you? Why cause some of the folks in the church got the most nasty attitude? Yeah. You're right. You're right on. If people see folks in the church getting along, loving one another, being in unity, supporting each other, no big eyes, no little use, no kind of differences, then the world will say, hey, wait a minute. That's what happened in the book of Acts. He said that there was so much unity that God added to the church daily. There was so much love. There was so much peace. They were friends. Everybody had their needs met because they didn't let nobody slack in anything, lack in anything. And the world said, hey, wait a minute. What's this? Yeah. So every day, God added to the church because they saw the unity yeah. of the church. Yeah. That's right. Unity. Warning. My God. My God. If you don't work on your fruit, there'll be no unity. It starts with yourself first. There will be no unity if you don't work on your fruit. And you can't produce no fruit without abiding in the sun. Yeah. And if the sun abide, if you abide in the sun, then guess what happens? He said, in return, I'll abide in you. Yeah. 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 